The first day you walk into the penitentiary, you're going to feel uh, a sense of anxiety. You're going to feel like everybody's looking at you. You're going to feel like everybody is clocking your movements. And this is because all of that shit is true. When you walk through those gates or you walk through those doors and that fucker slides behind you and shuts. Welcome to the Thunderdome. Every eye is on you. Every single person is looking at you. Every single person is thinking, what is he about? And that's one of those moments where you find out a lot about yourself. You go to your cell. And depending on where you're at, if you're in a dorm, you're going to uh, put your mat down. You're going to have a sack that they're going to give you a net bag. It's going to be full of your shit. It's going to be full of your towels, your little whites, your whites or your socks, your t-shirts, your boxers. You're going to be issued um, usually about five or six pair of boxers, four or five t-shirts, five pair of socks, um, a little pair of thong shower shoes. Uh, what I always did when I was on the major institutions is I would see who my cellie was and I would say, Hey man, here's my charges. Here's what I'm in here for. And I would step out the cell. That's what I did. Not everybody does that. The Virginia system is not the California system. It's not like as militant as the Cali system, as the Texas, as the West coast shit in Virginia, man, it's more like. We get to know you by talking to you. We are masters of letting you talk and tell your story and letting you fuck up and slip up and saying the wrong shit and uh, talking yourself into a fucking, into a situation that you're not going to be able to get out of where you're forced to show some shit. Uh, the first couple of days that you're in prison... You don't want to be the loudest dude in the pod. You don't want to be the loudest um, individual on the yard. You don't want to talk to everybody. Everybody is not out to be your friend. Trust me when I tell you this. You you have to understand being quiet, watching what's going on, watching who's who, watching who's a boy, watching who is uh, running certain organizations. Watch whatever phone you need to try to get in line with. The phone's are such an issue in the in the Department of Corrections because the gangs run them. In Virginia, the gangs in the cities run them. I'm, I live in Richmond. So Richmond's real fucking deep. Usually Richmond has a phone. Uh, then it's going to be the Bloods are going to have a phone. They are the biggest, the biggest uh, organization in the state of Virginia. They're the most organized. They are the most violent. And they are the strongest. Uh, they're going to have a phone. The GDs and the Crips tie together in the Virginia system. They're going to be having a phone. The whites usually are trying to share a phone. They're trying to pick the scraps. Just how it is. It's a fucking fact. Now, I'm going to talk about a phone situation where I actually... I have talked about it on this channel before where I actually... Got a phone for us, but I'm not going to do that uh, until I have. I got a buddy of mine who's getting ready to come home soon, and I want him to be here because I need to start. I, I want to validate the story because I know there's going to be a lot of people on there that are going to say, oh, he's lying. He didn't do this, and I'm going to start validating a lot of shit I'm saying because a lot of my homies are starting to come home, and they really are excited about getting on the show. You know, people always say, how come you don't bring your, your, your homeboys on the channel with you and stuff? That's because a lot of my homeboys are doing dirt. A lot of my homeboys are still in the streets, are still in their life. They're not going to put their face on camera. A lot of them motherfuckers got warrants. So anyway, things you need to be aware of when you're, when you're uh, <clears throat> on your first week or so in prison. You're going to pick who you're going to chill with. Who you work out with. Who you work out with is going to be very, very important. These are the guys that you trust the most with your fucking life. Because being a gang member, we had always a three-man team, if not more, but a minimum of three. Because you have one guy on the bench, you got one guy spotting, you got one guy watching everybody. Because it's real easy to run up on a motherfucker and... 
stab them when they got 350 pounds of weight on their chest. And real quick, uh, YouTube's been taking all my fucking monetization. They've been taking my money because my fucking shit ain't um, kid-friendly. So you know what? I'm just going to say what the fuck I want to say from now on. I'm not going to try to conform to YouTube's rules. This is Big Lance off the yard rules. It ain't like that anyway. It's not like I'm killing it. I never made a lot of money on YouTube any damn way. So you know what? Y'all keep that chump change. I'll work for mine. Now, the chow hall. When you go to the chow hall, you're going to you're gonna be very respectful in the chow hall, man. A lot of people get fucked up in the chow hall. I've seen people get fucked up in the chow hall so bad for the stupidest shit. You know, cutting in line. You're never going to cut in line. People will get very offended if you cut in line. And you're always going to sit with your people, man. With, and when I say people, I'm not talking about races in Virginia. We don't go by race like that. We do to a certain extent, but not really. When I say your people, I'm saying your little crew. Most of the people in Virginia, unless you're in the gang, if you're just a, a, a neutron, you're going to fucking run with like five or six dudes if that's who you associate with. Um, and you're going to sit with them all the time because you don't know who you're sitting with in prison. You could be sitting with a guy who sliced up an 80 year old woman and did some crazy shit to a dead body. You never know what the fuck is going on. I'll tell you a story. We had a, a, um, a situation one morning. I sat down with this dude and I'm talking to him and he's been down like 30 years, old head, um, older black guy. And we're talking or whatever about shit, about the yard. Well, I forget exactly what the conversation was. And my homeboy comes up beside me and he's like, hey, stick, come here, let me holler at you. And he's like, yo, man, don't sit with that dude. He ain't no good. I'm like, well, why? Why he ain't no good? Turns out that the guy that I was sitting with, and this was at Augusta, he's at Augusta to this day, was actually the South Side Strangler. This dude was notorious for raping and killing. He was he killed about 20 women or something in Richmond. Back in the 70s and early 80s, man. He was a fucking trifling dude. Piece of shit. And I'm sitting down there eating my, my fucking biscuits and gravy with this dude. Now, these are the individuals that you're going to be in prison with. So, if you have to go and if you have to fucking be in that situation, listen to what I'm telling you, man. Be careful who the fuck you sit with, who you talk to, who approaches you. Because it could mean it's going to determine the rest of your stay there. Because once you get that... That stereotype, and people put that on you, it's real hard to get it off. Um, and you don't want to be associated with people who are rats. Homosexuality, you know, it's hard to get those labels off of you if you're already labeled by the whole compound. Now, certain terminologies you're going to hear in the Virginia Department of Corrections, we call it, like a lot of the old heads are going to call each other stick. You hear us always say, what up, stick? And that's my stick man. A stick man is your homeboy. That's your dog. That's the motherfucker you walk around the yard with. That's the dude that's got your back. I still say it to this day, man. I say, what up, stick? Um, you're going to hear people call the prison a compound. Uh, what's up on the compound? You know, they, 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 you know, that's what it's called. I think they call that in Florida, too. There's probably a lot of states that call um, penitentiaries compounds. Certain names that we're going to call homosexuals is... Boy, we're going to call him a gump. A gump is a homosexual, but like a, a flaming homosexual, so we call him a gump. Um, I'm trying to think of some other shit that we say that, that we bring home, man. It's, it's, it's amazing to me because a lot of the shit that's out here in the world that people say originated in prison. You know what I mean? A lot of that shit. People take our slang and, and fucking use it in the world. It's amazing to me. But you'll have fucking, you'll have guards that fucking say the shit that we're saying. Guards start picking up on the lingo, man. If you go to prison and you're in a cell environment, I want you to make sure that you, you are, understand that you have to be very clean. And we've gone over this in the video, but I want to re reiterate this and touch, touch back on it. It is very important because... People are forced to live with each other. You don't know each other. Like you don't get to pick who you live with. So if 
you're putting a sale with a, a guy who's very institutionalized. He's going to be like extremely picky and extremely clean about certain shit <clears throat> most of the time. This is gonna this is gonna go all the way down to the most meticulous things that he owns because that's all that he has in the world, as in a box or on a little shelf in a cell that he's lived in for 20, 30, 40 years. And I've been in cells with lifers. I've been in cells with guys that are never going home that are washed up. And it's it's very, very difficult sometimes because you just ain't on the same page. We really don't have a lot to talk about. I think it's really irresponsible on both ends for the CEOs to put us in those situations together. Mm. In Virginia, we don't have designated spots on the yard. Um, it just don't roll like that. If um, there's a gang discussion going on, you obviously are going to stay away from that. Um, and when there's tension on the yard, when you know that someone's about to get hit, you're going to see everybody first and foremost, it'll be 95 degrees outside and everybody's wearing coats. That means in prison, we, 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 we fight with knives, we fight with blunt objects. So what I used to have is we had these big blue and orange coats that they give us. Inside the liner is orange. I would cut the inside and pack that with something like magazines or um, extra shirts. And that's what I'd wear out to the yard to cover all my vital areas. Um, I would place magazines in my belt waistline area because that way the, the, the blades couldn't get through. And if they did, at least it wasn't going all the way in my body, man. Um, that's one thing that we do to protect ourselves. A lot of people ask me, where do they put all the shanks at? Where do they hide them? Listen, I'm not, I know there's CEOs watching my channel. I'm not going to fucking talk about that. I'm not going to put nobody on blast. If you want to hear people get put on blast, go watch Wes Watson. Um, but when you enter these environments, you need to be aware that um, people are always watching you. You need to be aware that you are under 100% of the time scrutiny from these individuals they're trying to see what they can get out of you. Um, they're trying to see how they can use you. The gangs will fucking try to use you in certain ways. Even the COs. It goes down as far as the COs will use you. If they see you a bootlicking motherfucker that you're willing to bend over backwards to help the fucking cops. A bootlicker is one of them guys that comes to prison who's up the fucking administration's ass to clean their hallways, buff their floors. These are the guys that have like the pants with the hem at the bottom. They got the boot polish on their boots. Shirts always in compliance. Fucking name tag is always on their pocket. I hate a fucking bootlicker. Motherfucker couldn't get a job, was out there stealing purses, was not working McDonald's on the street to feed his family, but will come lick boots and shine floors for 45 cents a fucking hour for these fucking police. Get the fuck out my face with that shit, man. Anyway, look, man, just want to touch base on that, drop a few jewels about first getting in prison. I kind of freestyled it. I don't care. I'm talking about what I want to from now on. Everybody needs to have an idea that when we talk about motivation, when we talk about bettering our lives, you have to talk about the grimy shit, too. You have to talk about the bullshit that you've done in your life so you can be creditable. I love doing the motivational speaking. I love it. That's my shit. That's my drop. But I'm not credible if I don't tell you a couple things on why I was put in those situations I was in. So we will have a fluctuation of prison stories and motivation, motivation, motivation. Okay? So understand that and please be accepting to it because I'm trying to touch the whole audience, man. I'm trying to reach out and make sure everybody has not understand what's going on. Real quick, took the cast off. Oh, yeah. Look at that shit. Woo! Boy, that motherfucker is painful. All right, man. So, that's it for this morning. You guys have a great day. Have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day. And 
Remember that it's repetition, 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 man. That's how we achieve things in life. That's how we are progressing. That's how we make today our fucking bitch. Join the movement. As always, hit the subscribe. Hit the like. I love the BLC. You guys rock and roll, man. Keep on rocking in the free world. And as always, dude, stay up. Stay out, baby.